Hello and welcome to this presentation on demystifying the migration to Microsoft Dynamics Business Central. Today we're going to be talking about the business case for considering the migration and how that migration might be achieved from your current NAV version. The motivation for this webinar really came from some information that we presented back in our customer day in November of last year. At that event, we highlighted the Dynamics NAV roadmap as we then understood it, which was that the Dynamics NAV 2018 was going to be released in the spring of 18, and then that was going to be ultimately replaced by a product that we only then knew by its code name of Dynamics 365 Tenerife. We now know that Tenerife, uh, when it was released to market, has been released as Dynamics 365 Business Central. Dynamics 365 Business Central is fundamentally different to previous Dynamics NAV versions in that in addition to being deployed on an on-premise or on your own private cloud environment, it can also be deployed in a fully multi-tenanted cloud environment through the Dynamics 365 subscription. An important thing to note though is that both of these variants do share exactly the same code base which does give us some interesting upgrade and migration options, which we'll be discussing later in this webinar. Before we do that, I'd like to consider some of the business cases for considering that migration to Business Central. The first of which is the fact that Business Central really sits in a wider Dynamics 365 ecosystem that also includes other Dynamics 365 products, such as sales, marketing, and project service automation, but also other Office 365 products such as Power BI, Power Apps and Flow. And integrations between all of the cogs of this wheel that we see here are becoming an increasingly prevalent feature in Business Central. One of the other business cases for moving to Business Central is that it will have access to and sits within the app source, which provides ready-built applications that can be bolted into the Dynamics 365 Business Central application at minimal cost. The other case for migrating to Business Central that is um, very apparent is the ease at which it will be upgraded between versions. The previous versions of Dynamics NAV did require considerable projects to move between versions, and these were often barriers to customers upgrading. The architecture of Business Central means that version revisions are very, very easily done, often without any system downtime at all. So users of Business Central have instant access to all of the new Microsoft functionality that's developed as part of the Microsoft roadmap. One of the main reasons that this ease of upgrade is, is possible in Business Central is because there is a fundamental difference in how customizations are made to the systems. In Dynamics now of previous versions, resellers such as ourselves would perform quite invasive changes to the code core base to achieve the customizations in functionality that our customer, customers ask for. In Business Central, we have access to what's called the event and subscription based model, which means that customizations can be made to the um, Business Central application outside of the core code base and therefore the core code base can be more easily upgraded independently of the customizations. Indeed, when we come to considering the project's uh, structures for migrating to Business Central, a large part of the considerations of these projects is concerned with moving all the customizations in your current NAV system into the event and subscription model. When considering the migration from your current NAV system to Business Central, it might be appropriate to consider whether or not a direct migration to the on-premise multi-tenanted cloud environment is appropriate or a phased, phased approach would be best. The reason for this is that some of the capabilities of the on-premise Business Central and NAV, NAV solutions will be taken away in the public cloud multi-tenanted environment purely due to the inf infrastructure in which that, that environment exists. Some of the considerations for that might come into play when deciding what would be the best option for, you, for your business um, would be as follows. 
if your system has a lot of dependencies on interfaces to third party systems or uses directly elements of the underlying operating system or the .NET framework, then some of these capabilities might not immediately be possible in the multi-tenanted cloud environments. And therefore, the option one should be considered to go to the on-premise business central in the first instance. Ultimately, these dependencies will be mitigated because Microsoft is making available standard API features, which might take away the need for custom interfaces to third party systems and also dependencies on dotnet interoperability are being uh, alleviated as microsoft is conditionally making some of this functionality available as part of the native business central framework data security it would also be another consideration in that the Azure environment in which Business Central sits is highly compliant with a lot of the regulatory regimes that are out there now, um, such as GDPR, of course. And then the other option to consider there is that it might be a corporate policy that all line of business applications are being moved to the cloud um, by default. So having decided that a migration to Business Central is gonna be appropriate, we need either the cloud or the on-premise version. What might a project look like um, to get there from your current nav system? The current nav system will almost certainly, as the diagram indicates here, have customizations that are part of the standard objects that come out of the box from Microsoft. And there might well be custom objects in the solution as well, which have been developed by the reseller. So at TES, we've come up with a basic project plan which um, we'll go through stage by stage now. We're looking at the overview here, which starts with your current position on the left and then considers both possible endpoints of, of the migration, either to the cloud or to the on-premise version of Business Central. The starting position of any migration would be to upgrade the current database version that you're on to NAV 2018. And the rationale for this is that it's only in NAV 2018 that the extension and events framework becomes possible, which is, as we've seen, is core to the ultimate migration to Business Central. The next phase of this project would be to look at the customizations that are in place across the standard objects and the custom, custom objects and make a decision as to whether or not these customizations might be redundant as they've been replaced by functionality that is now part of the standard solution, or they are appropriate customizations that do need to be taken forward, and therefore we will refactor them as an extension. Having made this decision, we have two potential models to deploy the extensions in. We could take the view possibly with lightly customized databases that all of the customizations simply go into one basic extension which covers all of the customizations. Or in more heavily customized databases where the customizations fall into succinct groups and distinct modules, the refactoring might take place into an extension per module. What the diagram here does illustrate as well though is that there will likely be a remaining a small footprint in the standard nav object database. There's a couple of reasons for this in that the, to implement all of the functionality through extensions, we do require that Microsoft provides us events in the core nav product in all of the places that we need. And, and this might not be the case in, in, all, in all situations. So we would expect the uh, coming into phase four or phase three of this project to have still keeping a small cust customization footprint. Phase five of this project model would be the removing of that remaining footprint in the, in the uh, customer in, in the standard object ranges. And we would do this by just completely refactoring the, the, the way the customizations are made. And once we're in a, in a situation where the database has no customized standard objects, we would then be in a position to move into the business central environment, be it the multi-tenanted or, or the on-premise. 
So some of the commercial considerations around migrating to, to Business Central are going to be considered in the some literature that Microsoft have produced, um, which covers some of the complex issues um, which may become apparent. Your current NAV license is most likely a perpetual license describing concurrent users, which doesn't necessarily work, certainly in the uh, public cloud environment for Business Central. The license will describe light users, which are going to be reflected in the Business Central environment as team users. And there is also the consideration of the numbers of named and concurrent users that come into play as the licensing model is slightly different for both of these between the two environments. Microsoft have issued guidelines um, to, to, to consider all, all of these issues, and these are going to be different for each customer situation. So I've provided a link there to that document so that the, these can be considered. Microsoft have also instigated a, an incentive program. Um, they obviously want to see people making this migration. So certainly for the foreseeable future, we do see some preferable license, commercial licensing terms that will be on offer for any customers that do consider this. Thanks for listening to this presentation. If you do have any further questions, please do contact me or talk to your account manager at Total Enterprise Solutions, where this presentation and any other associated documentation, such as Microsoft's commercial um, document, can be found.